It's no secret that we all love Pokemon fusions, but which ones are the best of the best? Legendaries? Dragon types? No. Today, we'll be beating infinite fusion with only starter fusions. Oh, and just to make things more difficult, this'll be a deathless run. Not necessarily a Nuzlocke, but if a Pokemon faints in battle, I'll need to reset back to the beginning of that battle. Before jumping in, let me know what you think the best starter fusion would be. Also, if you've been enjoying the content lately, I'd really appreciate you subscribing. Let's try to smash 7,000 likes for everyone's favorite trios. With all that said, let's get into it. Who else but the professor's wife would be up to the task of taming a team of starter fusions? After meeting up with our rival, Grandson, we stopped by Sammy's lab to get our first team member, Squirtle. After taking out the fused Charsaur, we can finally take our starters out of the box and start our journey. I spent an hour or two doing the permutation to get the six coolest combinations of starters that I could, and here's what I came up with. First is the double turtle fusion, Squirtle and Turtwig, also known as Squirtwig. Next we get the Bulbasaur Cyndaquil fusion Cyndasaur with the cutest little face. Number three is Mudkip and Charmander, giving us Charkip, who levitates using his tail flames. Fourth is Torchic and Chikorita, or Chikachik, who's so happy to be here. Now I actually fuse two water types together, but look at how awesome Pipdio looks. This obviously leaves Trico and Chimchar, creating our little Treechar. Oh, and just to have a little more variety, I included Pichu and Eevee as starters, so here's Ichu. Now it's time for another matchup with our grandson, but Charkip absolutely roasts his Nidoji and Charsaur with Embers. At level 12, it's time to take on Brock and his Rock Fusions. First is GOG, which looks like an old-timey cartoon who wants to fight. Sadly for the Rock Hard Leader, Pip Dial is able to make quick work of the Bird with Bubble, along with this cursed amalgamation of Diglett. Now in Mount Moon, we get a bunch of evolutions, starting with Cyndasaur, who gets a little more firepower and opens his eyes as Quisor. Next is Pipdial, and one thing I noticed is a lot of the Stage 1 plus base fusions don't have custom sprites, so here's Prindile. We also get Chickabuskin and Wartwig, then the Bulbasaur half of our Quizar evolves, and we get a little burnt tree on its back. Chickabuskin evolves one more time into Baybuskin, Treechar becomes Treeferno, and Charkip evolves into the much worse looking Chartop. Now we see Giovanni and his goons about to test their triple fusion machine, and after beating the scientist they sick on us, Chartomp evolves back into a custom sprite. Luckily, the machine overheats, but before we can catch the rocket boss, he and his underlings flee the scene. Now in Cerulean, there's another grandson battle, but first I make sure to finish our stage 1 evolutions off, getting Groferno, Prinaw, and Wardle, which might be my favorite right now. This is what I consider the first real rival fight, so let's see how it goes. I lead Prinaw, who bubbles Nidodo before getting whirlwinded out to our underleveled Ichu. I go back to the pure water type, who tanks some quick attacks and a double kick, then gets the first KO with two bubbles, the first of which being a crit. Against Mantata, I go to Groferno, who's hit by Seismic Toss. Our fighting type is able to guarantee a knockout with the priority Mach Punch, bringing in the starter Charsaur. We get a free punch in as the fiery plant tries to use poison powder, but our grass type is unaffected. Now I throw out a taunt to stop any powders from being used, and after one more punch and a takedown, it's time to swap to my own Ivasaur fusion. Charsaur brings itself into healing range with takedown recoil, but we're still able to come out on top with Ember Spam as the Gen 1 fusion hits one more headlong rush and fails to sleep powder us before going down. Last is Abra, who only has Teleport, so we smack it with some vines and make it out of this battle on our first try. While grinding for Misty, our Pichu half of Ichu evolves into Pikachu. Now let's take on the Water Leader. We start with Wardle against Jigglydean. Razor Leaf doesn't quite get the kill, so we take a disarming voice before Misty heals. Absorb brings us back to full, and I actually decide to curse here since the normal water type doesn't really threaten us too much. Two curses later, and a pair of Absorbs get the KO, so now it's just down to the ace, Odyu. Our double turtle has no problem tanking Mega Drains from the Grass Water type and completes his sweep with two plus two Razor Leaves, getting us the Cascade Badge. Now we walk in on Bill living out some weird fantasy of being a Rhydon, so we'll just let him cook. On to the SSN, our battle with Grandson is pretty much the same as the last. I just want to show off his new Charsaur, Manicate, and Starbra. 
We rub the captain's back, but I don't think Oak would be too happy if he found out. Anyway, it's time to take on Surge and his electric fusions. Knowing his lead is part water, I start things off with Groferno, who has incredible speed and has already learned Leaf Blade, which makes for an easy KO. Pikalit goes down to the same, but against his ace Rybuzz, I swap to our ground-type Chartomp. After evading Thunder Punch, all the buff Raichu can do is quick attack as we clean up this fight with a Mud Bomb followed by Mud Shot. Between here and Lavender Town, we see some cool fusions like Slowlith, Echnix, and Sheltong, which I guess is more disturbing than cool. Now it's time for another bout with Grandson and Pokemon Tower. First is a Kyoto who does get a Crit Bone Meringue on Quizor before going down to a critical hit of our own with Razor Leaf. Now he sends in a Gyarados, so I go to Wardle to tank Thrash. After a second, we get lucky as the Serpent is confused before his third attack, and we Mega Drain for some recovery. I bring in Ichu as our opponent hits himself, allowing us to finish it off with a Thundershock next turn. Starbra gets healed twice, but eventually goes down to a pair of Swifts, just leaving Charsaur, who's dealt with by Chartomp's Fire Fang and Mudshot. Once Mr. Fuji gets taken away, we beeline it to Celadon to tell Erika about the kidnapping. We follow her into the sewers, and after taking out this Rocket Grunt's Magnumer, Prinaw evolves into Prinligator. Unfortunately for us, Erika and Giovanni have the same level cap of 35. Because we need to battle the Rocket Boss and some gym trainers before the leader, I decide to go into this fight at 33, meaning this will be our first real challenge of the run. At least the grass starter halves of Quizor, Wardle, and Baybuskin evolve before jumping in, but will it be enough? The Crime Boss leads with an Arbok Onyx Fusion as I send in Chartomp. We outspeed and Mudshot, bringing the Poison Rock type down to Sturdy as it misses Slam. Our next attack misses as a Max Potion comes out, then we rinse and repeat turn 1 except this time we're hit by Acid Spray. Arnix is swapped into Ryrus as I opt for Flame Burst, bringing the Rock Ice type into the red. One more gets us a KO, but now we're met with the Kingpin's ace, Honkon. Not expecting a single Shadow Ball to decimate us, we're unfortunately forced to reset here. We actually have to reset a second time, but now I have a strategy that'll hopefully get us through this battle unscathed. Chartomp is still gonna mudshot Arnix, but this time it actually has Intimidate instead of Sturdy, so it's an Oko. Now at full health with Honkon in, we can attack once, breaking through Dizzy Punch's confusion to do around a quarter to the normal Ghost. Here we swap to War Terra, who's thankfully hit by Payback instead of Shadow Ball. We then eat Chip away and are able to set up Leech Seed, which will ensure Prinligator can survive a second Shadow Ball after taking about 50% on the switch in. After a Dizzy Punch, we get a Crunch KO, and now it's all down to Ryrus. I bring Mega Buskin in, who gets frozen by Ice Beam, so instead of attacking, I go to Quisor. Flame Wheel does less than I would have liked it to, and I hold my breath as Giovanni reveals Rock Blast, luckily only hitting twice. Now I go to Groferno, who resists a 4-spot, and can finish the battle on the following turn with Leaf Blade. With that, the Sylph Scope is ours, but before heading back to Pokemon Tower, we need to deal with Erika. Her Executuo starts things off with a hefty Seed Bomb and is able to hang on through Chartomp's Flame Burst. After a heal, we're plucked before taking the Egg Bird down with another Fiery Barrage. Next is Tanape, who Ancient Powers as I go to Quizor, doing close to half our health. Flame Charge does 50% to the Primeape Tangela Fusion, and after surviving another Ancient Power in the red, we can take the Fighting Vines out next turn with another Speedy Burn. Last is Vile Bell, and I'm pretty much forced to go to Groferno, but we luck out as the Fly Trap went for Poison Powder. I start building Fury Cutter here, and after tanking a Solar Beam, Erika orders her ace to use the ineffective Poison Powder one last time before going down. With the Rainbow Badge in hand, Chartomp evolves into Charpert, Groferno into Gronape, and Quizor into Typesaur. The Channelers in Pokemon Tower have some great fusions, but this sad ghastly leaving a cracked Execute as its soul is so good. We also get to see Charpert's final Evo here, which is definitely in the running for best fusion on the team. Mega Buskin also evolves into Megaikin, which really just feels like a cheerleader to me. Next, War Terra becomes his final form, Blast Terra, and look at the size of this thing's cannon. We also get the last of our true starter evolutions as Prinligator becomes Impoligator, and Gronape evolves into my favorite fusion, Sepnape. The usual Marowak encounter here is replaced with a Marowak Gengar fusion, which just emphasizes the fact that it's dead. 
After we take it down, we find Mr. Fuji, who tells us the grunts took the prototype for the Master Ball from him and then left him alone. He then hands us the polka flute so we can continue on our journey to Fuchsia City. Standing in our way of facing Koga is this abomination. Please get me out of here. The ninja leads with Venomer as I send out Charpert. Two quick flame bursts pick up KO number one, along with Magnifying, but against Beether I switch to Rock Slide, which doesn't quite get the kill as we're poison jabbed. After a heal, a pair of flame bursts finish the bug, but now the ace Chanuk hits the field, who's very specially bulky. Two takedowns bring us down to 9 HP, so I go to Blast Terra, who would have been poisoned either way here. One Earthquake is all it takes to finish things up, and that's it for the Soul Badge. We have to take a second to look at Mafetched here in Silphco. They replaced the Leak Farfetch carries with a Barbell. We also get to see this super cool Magneton fusion, and I'm not gonna try to say that one. Similar to our Erika situation, before battling Sabrina, we need to take on our rival and Giovanni. Except this time, the level cap is actually lower than the Rocket Boss's ace, so we're going in pretty underleveled. Things start off okay against Grandson, KOing his lead Nido Geot and Electados, but unfortunately Tauros survives close combat from our Sepnape and reveals Zen Headbutt, so here's another reset. Let's see how Attempt 2 goes. Empolagator takes Nido Geot down, even with the Poison Flying type using Earth Power to start. With Electados back in, I let Megaikin eat Discharge, and he breaks through Paralysis to set up Reflect. After a few more discharges, we get the knockout via Razor Leaves and Synthesis to gain some health on the way. Now it's back to the menace himself, Tauros. Typesaur tanks the first takedown well on our last Reflect turn, but then Zen Headbutt flinches us as we try to Leech Seed. We managed to get our saplings up and barely hang on, and now I switch to Blastero, who takes just under half from the Reckless Charge. The Bull throws out another Zen Headbutt as we Earthquake, and next turn after a workup, we take it down with one more. I now send my Charizard Fusion out to deal with his Charmeleon one, and after a Dragon Rage, we start Flame Bursting. Three hits of our fire take the starter out, who actually has the more powerful Flamethrower, but going for Solar Beam sealed its fate. This just leaves Starbro, who hits a not very effective Power Gem into Blastera on the switch in. Then we're hit by Confuse Ray, but keep our wits about us and take out our first obstacle with one last EQ. In our first attempt against Giovanni, we don't even see his ace as Ryrus's brine absolutely rinses Charpert. Alright, take two. This time we see Gankan, but a double up on Blastera of Dark Pulse and, you guessed it, brine, make for another reset. Third time's the charm? This time I lead Blastera, who's CC'd by Prime Arino after the fighting type is hit by our rival's wing attack. We then immediately get Leech Seed on Ryrus, who sets up a pretty useless safeguard. Thanks to Close Combat's defense drop, even after a heal, wing attack takes Prime Arino down. Then I start cursing as Nido Geot is hit by Stone Edge. Genkon is back now, who isn't able to kill our rival's lead as we finish the ride on Lapras fusion with a plus one Aqua Tail. Now it's finally time to deal with the level 51 ace, Sand Queen. Nido Geot finally goes down to Gankon's Dark Pulse, and Sand Queen's Gyro Wall barely hurts us as our single target Earthquake does 60%. Our greatest enemy has now become our friend as Tauros finishes the Queen with a Zen Headbutt and our Aqua Tail hits the Ghostly Mother for half her health. Finally, after surviving a second Dark Pulse from the monster, we're able to retake Silphco with one final Aqua Tail. With Giovanni escaping yet again, all we can do for now is continue on to Sabrina's gym. Before battling the leader, I give Ichu a Moonstone, giving us Umchu. We immediately follow up with a Thunderstone, evolving him into the best Dark Boy. Why are there so many cursed Pokemon in the base version of this game? Anyway, let's take on the Telekinetic Terror. I lead Empolagator against the Psychic Fairy Hipmime, who nasty plots and survives our Metal Claw on the red. As a max potion comes out, we use Aqua Jet, and just as I expect to get a Metal Claw kill next turn, we see Baton pass into Esrion, who doesn't take much from the attack. Dark Pulse does solid damage, so after Brine brings the evolution down to around 40%, I swap to Sepnape, who takes more than I hoped he would from the Dark type move. A 4 times effective Fury Cutter is able to drop Esrion, but as her ace gang Kazam hits the field, it's Umchu time. After phasing through a Psycho Cut, we go for Feint Attack, and... Oh no! This Deathless thing is about to get a lot harder, isn't it? 
Things actually go pretty much the same this time, so in the same Umchu situation, I nuzzle first to ensure we outspeed. Now we can fearlessly feign attack, bringing out Sabrina's last Pokemon, Alabro. Thunderbolt just barely misses out on a KO, so we're hit by a retaliatory Surf. With another heal coming out, I employ my Nuzzle combo again for knockout number 3. Now it's back to Hip Mime, so Impoligator makes his return, dodging Hypnosis on entry. Next turn, we slurp up a Psychic and our Ironclad Claws rip into this Nightmare Fusion for the win. We saw Triple Cats, but now introducing Triple Dogs. In the Pokemon Mansion, we convince Blaine to head back to his gym, but before taking him on, we chase Team Rocket to Mount Ember for one last showdown. If you've seen Zap Mokuno before, I'm sure you're wondering how I'm going to beat it without fainting. And to be honest, I am too. My first thought is to flamethrower Articuno, but I can't pick up the knockout, so I end up pivoting, but Typesaur goes down. Now what you're about to see is perhaps the luckiest Pokemon moment captured on camera. I start with a rock slide, but unbeknownst to me, each bird is holding a charty berry to reduce rock damage. We somehow manage to flinch both Moltres and Articuno, so after only taking a drill peck from Zapdos, I fire off rock slide number two. The three birds all still survive, but an unprecedented triple flinch basically seals this one. Due to triple pressure, we're down to our last rock slide, which connects yet again on all three legendaries, KOing Moltres and Articuno. After surviving another drill pack from Zapdos, I play things safe, going to Blast Terra to tank the next. Aqua Tail comes up just short of the knockout, so we actually need to eat one more attack, bring Umchu in to tank the last, and then safely finish this battle with Feign Attack. As the triple fusion separates, Giovanni takes some time to think things over, and the rest of the grunts clear out. Is this what Double Dug Trio looks like? This is like one of those triangle puzzles where you have to count how many there are. Let me know what you get down below. Now I waltz on up to the ex-rocket scientist to lay down the hurt. Glue Dash starts by storing Sun for a solar beam, but never gets to release it as dual flamethrowers from Charpert take it out, winning a speed tie on turn 2. Next is Magdon, who never stood a chance against Earth Power, but my best move against Chardactyl is to use the non-stab Muddy Water after being crunched. Two full restores come out, and then more filthy waves drop the ace whose Hyper Beam definitely scared me for a second there. Last is Nine Nine, whose Fire Fang finds Blastera's shell for minimal damage. Unfortunately, we're burned, so I just set up Leech Seed before swapping out to Empoligator, who's roared anyway to Charpert. Feeling pretty comfortable thanks to Leech Seed recovery, I go for Earth Power, but need to break through Confusion first, which we do, in order to earn ourselves the Volcano Badge. Now it's a beeline to take on Giovanni one last time at the Viridian City Gym. He leads a Rhyperus against our Empoligator. Some Surf Spam causes the ex-Rocket Boss to waste all of his full restores, and just before his lead goes down, he swaps into Electric Trio, who drops to a pair of Aqua Jets. Next is Gochamp who hangs on through Surf and almost causes another reset with its Dynamic Punch. Since we're confused, I'm forced to switch to Blastero who can live through Earthquake and outspeed on the following turn for an Aqua Tail kill. The Ace Glissitar is next up whose own Earthquake leaves us on 12 HP as Aqua Tail just can't drop the Armored Scorpion. I go to Sepnape here but get hard red as Poison Jab immediately brings us into the red. Mach Punch's priority means I can guarantee a knockout here, but as Rylax comes out, I go into Mega Icon. Earthquake doesn't do much, and after setting up Reflect and healing with Synthesis, we take the Glutton down with Razor Leafs along with Rhyperus, who returns just in time to give us the Earth Badge. Now we've got one last obstacle before the Elite Four, but I'm just going to show Grandson's new fusion since Sylph. One absolute abomination is this Talk Cute, which actually makes Tauros worse. After Type Sword deals with the Furballs, we're also introduced to Maghorn, who's easily dealt with by Charpert's Earth Power. Last up is Starkazam, the final form of Starbra, but after just using a few Calm Minds, Umchu can feign attack his way through this battle and on to Victory Road. Oh, I really wish I could unsee this. Well, with the team at 59, it's time to test our medal against the best of the best. Lorelei leads with a Magong as I send out Sepnib, but immediately swap to Blastera to tank Flamethrower. After Bubble Beam, our Earthquake isn't quite enough to get the knockout, but the heal does allow us to set up Curse. 
Now that we're strong enough to kill, the Ice Master sends in Mambro, whose takedown crashes into Umchu, triggering static. A quick full restore is used, but the Mammoth only gets to make it hail before going down to a string of faint attacks. Unfortunately, the Ice Grass type Jingrowth crits an Ice Punch as Typhsaur hits the field, but he's able to outspeed for a Flamethrower KO on the following turn. The swap for Tentaster is Sepnape, and those Stealth Rocks won't be any trouble for us. Two Leaf Blades take the Shelled Squid down, but I'll admit that Icicle Crash was a pretty close call. Against the Ace Weiris, we can just fire off a close combat to decimate the Dark Ice type and advance on to Bruno. The Black Belt opens with Mavire as I send in Charpert. Earth Power makes quick work of the wrestler and then I swap my own fighting type Sepnape in against Marachan who misses Dynamic Punch. A single Leaf Blade picks up kill number two, but as Steechamp comes in it's back to our Ground Fire type who's unaffected by Sandstorm. Flamethrower melts the Metal Brawler, but now the unexpectedly dangerous Sickross comes in. X-Scissor doesn't do much, and after surviving a Flamethrower, I decide to Rock Slide for some chip on the heel. To my surprise, the Steel Fighting type sets up Swords Dance and hangs on through a second Molten Stream. We Muddy Water as another full restore is used, but it's too little too late as a plus two close combat puts us back at square one. On attempt 2, this monster KO'd our Charpert without even getting the attack boost, so I knew I needed to change my strategy. This time I have Typhsaur deal with the third Mon Steechamp, and then his superior bulk allows him to survive one close combat. Thanks to the special defense drop, Bruno's potion is rendered worthless as Flamethrower now drops the Rhinoceros Beetle from full health. Last is a Magna Nyx, who locks on to Blast Terra as he switches in, then outplays me with Magnet Rise as I try to EQ. Regardless, we're barely scratched by Iron Tail before finally finishing the fighters team with a pair of Aqua Tails, so now we can take on Agatha. The old bag's lead is Misma Bat, but Umchu walls it. After being hit by Wing Attack, we static the bat and take it down with a pair of Fan Attacks. Next is Wobgar, who survives our Dark-type move on 1 HP and reveals the always dangerous Destiny Bond. I Moonlight next turn so we don't knock ourselves out, and despite being back at full HP, the Ghost Psychic-type drops to our next sneaky strike. Now Gendoom hits the field and takes around 70% from our Faint Attack, but retaliates by connecting the 50% accurate Inferno and getting the burn. Knowing I outspeed, I Thunderbolt for the KO, but as Snorgar comes in, I have to swap. And Poligator eats body slams and a shadow punch while doing 50% to the normal ghost with Surf and Metal Claw. I go to Blastera on the heel and then Leech Seed the Lazy Blob as it curses. After a last ditch body slam, we pick up knockout number 4 with Aqua Tail, leaving Agatha with only Umter. I bring Charpert into a Nightshade, but then he's outsped for Dark Pulses, which flinch him on back to back turns. At only 17 HP, I go to Typhsaur who survives two more attacks, the second of which being a crit, and High Rolls Pedal Dance number two to win the battle. Lance's team is extremely tough for us to deal with. Between his lead Dragados and his fairy dragon Togonite, we definitely have our work cut out for us. Our first four attempts fail to one of these two mons, and then, just when I have a glimmer of hope of getting to the champion, Porridge's Dragon Pulse brings us back to the beginning of the battle. But you know what they say about lucky attempt number six, right? Umchu leads by T-bolting the angry Dragonair who sets up the rain turn one. A second bolt of lightning doesn't get the knockout, but with Outrage locking the dragon into attacking, we can safely outspeed next turn and draw first blood. Now it's right to Togonite, who Impoligator is tasked with taking out. Moonblast does a quarter of our health and lowers our special attack, but since we're physical, that's totally fine. The Resisted Outrage does the same amount as we Metal Claw, which looks like it could be a 3-shot. The next two Outrages get slightly lower rolls, doing 48 damage instead of 50, allowing us to survive on 4 HP and drop the Fairy with two more Metallic Slashes. With Tyranodactyl next, I bring in Blastera, luckily being struck by the not very effective Head Smash. Another move with Recoil, Brave Bird is used, and then our Fortress picks up a KO of his own with Aqua Tail. Now it's time for revenge on Porridra. A special attack boost from download is scary, but Sepnape takes less than half from Tri Attack as he switches in. I go for my strongest move, Close Combat, which even without the crit may have been enough to one-shot here. 
With lower defenses, I definitely don't want to stay in against the Fire-type Typhnare, so I let Charper eat the four times resisted Fire Blast. As the next misses, we Earth Power, barely leaving the Salamander alive. Eventually, after a few full restores from Lance, we take his final Mon down with a Rock Slide, officially earning us the right to challenge Grandson for the title of Kanto Champion. But wow is this fight brutal. On our very first attempt, his lead Nidogeot gets to plus 4 attack and drops Impoligator with Earthquake. That's not even the tip of the iceberg. His whole team can easily KO any of my members if things go his way, so I decide to take a moment and plan. Barring a few things going wrong, I should be able to come out on top, but of course when I won this fight, I forgot to start recording, so after an extra half hour of attempts, we got to here. I had to teach Charpert Fire Blast because Flamethrower isn't strong enough to two-shot Nidogeot. A Swords Dance turn 1 is scary since Earthquake can come out at any moment, but after exhausting 4 of our 5 Fire Blast PP, we pick up the first knockout, only taking a wing attack in the process. This bait Starkazam will always go for Surf on our Fire Ground type, allowing us to pivot through Sepnape to have its Psychic Umchu. Now the Water Psychic Fusion uses Cosmic Power, but Thunderbolt still does 50%. After a full restore, we low roll, but one more heal and two turns of Gracious RNG give us another KO as we're hit by Surf. Ripe Mortar is the least threatening Pokemon on our rival's team, but of course as I say that, he crits a Drill Run into Blastera. Then Will-O-Wisp connects, so our Aqua Tail only does about 60% to the Ground Fire type, and its Absorb Bulb raises its special attack. My backup here is to go to Sepnape, expecting a Drill Run, but it's a double swap as Tawtor comes in on the opposing side. This actually puts us in good position to get Umchu back in for free, since he can't be touched by the baited Zen Headbutt. Now I Moonlight back to full as we dodge Giga Impact, and nuzzle the three-headed bull, rendering its scary face useless. With a perpetual speed advantage, we get this kill via Feint Attack spam, but one Giga Impact does connect, bringing us into the red along the way. As Ripe Mortar returns, it's back to Sepnape, who tanks the resisted Stone Edge, then guarantees a kill with close combat. Grandson's Ace Charsaur is meant by our own Venusaur Fusion to battle for supremacy. We dodge one Inferno, but don't get so lucky next turn as we're already brought below half health as we set up Growth. Sticking to my guns, I growth again, and now our counterparty locks itself into Petal Blizzard. At plus two, Flamethrower is a two-shot, and I've never been so happy to see a Solar Beam in my life. We survive the photosynthesized blast with 36 HP and bring down the starter, leaving Grandson with only his Electodose. As long as Sepnape doesn't get paralyzed by this Thunder Punch, we got this in the bag. Perfect. At 42 HP, our insane speed stat allows us to shred the electric water type to bits with Leaf Blade, defeating our rival, for the second time, and completing the journey. Starters are near and dear to every Polka fan's heart, and the fact that they form insanely cool fusions makes them all that much better. When I started this Deathless Challenge, there were definitely some fights that I hadn't considered, but it just goes to show that with enough planning and a little bit of luck, or a lot of luck, any challenge can be beaten. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to smash that like button and subscribe so you don't miss out on the next one. Thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you next time.